we were not sure what would happen to us. We did not know what would happen to our pupils and our staff members. हमें डर था कि बच्चे कहीं पीछे ना रह जाए हेलो हम टीचरों को ही कोई नया रास्ता ढूंढना था We're going to work out the volume of this spring roll. Good morning and welcome to our whole school assembly. Let's get some learning on. I consist of 95% water. <laughs> Happy to see so many people. Hi. Ciao, bambini. El COVID nos ha llevado a innovar, a hacer cosas eh, disruptivas, a hacer cosas diferentes. God, how about you, Technology can level the playing field for children. It opens up so many avenues that they otherwise would not have been exposed to. It's hope. Hi everyone, and welcome to Learning with Google. We've been working on some really exciting things that we can't wait to show you. Learning has always been core to our mission of organizing the world's information and making it universally accessible and useful. The two are deeply connected. Learning is what makes information useful and what enables people to apply knowledge to make things better for themselves, their families, and their communities. I know that firsthand. Growing up, my parents and teachers instilled in me a deep curiosity about the world. It's what put me on a path to bring technology to more people and what inspired me to help build Chromebooks a decade ago. I never imagined they would be used to help students connect to virtual classrooms in a pandemic. It's been a hard year, to say the least. Yet each day, you show up and tirelessly support your students, just as you always have. On behalf of all of us at Google, let me say thank you for all you do under some really difficult circumstances. I'm proud that we've been able to help in small ways. 150 million students, educators, and school leaders globally are now using Google Classroom, up from 40 million a year ago. And we have seen teachers come together on YouTube to support each other as you work to keep students motivated and classrooms safe. The need to learn and teach from anywhere won't end, even when the pandemic does. We have an incredible opportunity to reimagine learning for what comes next. That's why last year we made learning and education a formal focus area, building on our long-term work. I asked Ben Gomes, one of the original architects of Google Search, to lead this broader effort, and Avni Shah, a 17-year veteran of Google, to lead our Google for Education team. Our goal is to bring the best of Google to help you solve important challenges in learning and education today. That's what learning with Google is all about, the educators, leaders, and partners around the world who are building a better future for your students and kids everywhere. Thank you for learning with us and for letting us learn from you. Now please sit back and enjoy the rest of the event. La risposta alla crisi all'inizio è stata complessa perché chiaramente quando uno tsunami chiamato coronavirus compare improvvisamente nelle vite di tutti è un fenomeno sconosciuto. Dover chiudere le scuole è stata una decisione difficilissima, però sapevamo molto bene che rispetto ad un virus completamente sconosciuto la nostra priorità assoluta doveva essere quella di salvare vite umane. Quando di fatti è scoppiata la pandemia la scuola non era pronta ad affrontare un periodo così complesso. Abbiamo immediatamente messo su la task force per le emergenze educative del Ministero dell'Istruzione e ci siamo attivati per fare una call pubblica 
alcune piattaforme hanno risposto e da lì insieme anche alle compagnie telefoniche ci siamo inventati da zero la didattica a distanza. Il ministro dell'istruzione ci ha contattato per chiederci come Google avrebbe potuto supportarli. E la reazione è stata di attivazione immediata per poter mettere poi a disposizione gli strumenti di Google for Education per tutte le scuole italiane. C'è stata un'iniziale fase di smarrimento perché si trattava di strumenti nuovi e bisognava imparare ad utilizzarli. Prima della pandemia l'adozione di strumenti tecnologici era abbastanza modesta e quindi abbiamo lavorato con moltissimi partner proprio per cercare di supportare i professori in questo senso. Il desiderio di fornire un supporto concreto per far sì che potesse partire la didattica a distanza ha incentivato tutti noi a lavorare giorno e notte per poter soddisfare tutte le esigenze delle scuole. Siamo riusciti ad attivare un call center e di fornire tutto il servizio alle scuole italiane. Sì, avrei bisogno di informazioni relative alla classroom. Non esistono competenze che non si possono acquisire. Abbiamo gli strumenti oggi per rimanere in contatto, per capire e lavorare anche in modo eh, differente. Abbiamo aiutato i professori a cercare di conoscere il digitale come uno strumento per poter potenziare diciamo, la lezione. In un momento pandemico di grande crisi si è fatto squadra e quindi compagnie telefoniche e piattaforme ci hanno aiutato per dare una risposta al mondo della scuola e devo dire che è stata molto molto apprezzata. Ci siamo attrezzati in modo da poter offrire alla nostra utenza dei dispositivi acquistati con dei fondi messi a disposizione dallo Stato italiano. Il docente della scuola italiana, ma io direi anche della scuola mondiale, ha capito che le tecnologie possono essere un grande aiuto nel loro lavoro quotidiano. Il digitale è stato fondamentale, quindi anche gli strumenti di Google, perché ci ha permesso di continuare a rimanere in contatto, continuare a studiare, continuare a essere produttivi. Tutte le famiglie, gli insegnanti, gli studenti sanno che cos'è la didattica digitale integrata. Penso che si siano fatti dei grossi passi avanti. Quindi la scuola italiana post-coronavirus sarà una scuola arricchita. La didattica digitale in classe si potrà fare, si dovrà parlare la lingua del XXI secolo che è quella che ormai i nostri studenti e le nostre studentesse ci chiedono. Hello everyone and thank you so much for being with us today. From whatever part of the world you're tuning in from, we're really grateful you could join us. I'm Ben Gomes and I lead Google's learning and education initiatives globally. I joined Google 21 years ago and I've spent most of my career working on search, which is where Google's mission all began. But last year, I took on a new role, and some people asked me, why education? Is there a connection to search, and why now? The answer for me is both personal as well as professional. On a personal level, my own education gave me access to opportunities, and it played a central role in shaping my interest and even the person I am today. There were teachers who inspired my early curiosity to a chemistry teacher in high school who inspired a love of science in not just me, but a generation of students in my school. On a professional level and from the perspective of search, one of the main reasons we see people come to Google is with the intent to learn. Whether it's for information in the moment or really anything they're curious about. Beyond search, people might also come to YouTube to watch a video to learn to meditate, say, or to earn their IT certificate with Grow with Google. Learning now starts with information, which is the core of what Google deals with, but then requires us to internalize and apply that information. And when we learn something new in this way, we absorb information to actually change in some way who we are and what we are capable of. Now, in this process, nothing can replace the power of a good teacher, but technology allows us to provide more tools, more resources to help teaching and hopefully to enable more learning. No matter our backgrounds, everyone can and should have access to great learning experiences. 
And the goal is to help people transform themselves to realize their own full potential. Timing-wise, I stepped into this role at a really critical time when the learning landscape was undergoing its largest disruption ever. COVID continues to blur the lines between home and classroom, and it takes everyone, teachers, parents, extended families, working together to just get through the school day. This daily challenge is also compounded by unequal access to devices and connectivity, and also the digital skills needed to use all these tools. We focused our work across Google where we thought we could add the most value, whether that was learning for school, learning for work, or learning for life. From the perspective of learning for schools, we listened to feedback from thousands of educators around the world to create and improve upon our existing solutions for learning in schools, like G Suite for Education, Classroom, Chromebooks, and Google Cloud. And today, you will hear a lot more about our efforts there. From the perspective of learning for work, as millions of people around the world look to grow or pivot their skills and careers, and even their businesses, we expanded our training and certifications to grow with Google to help support them. And from the perspective of lifelong learning, we hope that products like Search and YouTube continue to help and inspire people to learn more and to follow their curiosity wherever it may lead. Other products like Google Arts and Culture put the treasures, the stories from thousands of cultural institutes around the world within the reach of anyone, anywhere, with a smartphone. The world is becoming much more digital, so we've also continued to develop programs to expose young people to computer science and to help them become good digital citizens. Now, learning takes place in a large ecosystem, and Google has long believed in the power of nonprofits to have great impact. Google.org has donated more than $250 million towards education since 2005. And they recently announced a new $10 million distance learning fund to support teachers and students, particularly those from underserved communities. Google Cloud set aside $20 million for university researchers working on COVID-19, and they also hosted public data sets to ensure that the world had the latest statistics from which to learn. As you can see, this has really been and will continue to be a company-wide effort, because learning and education is not a new direction for us. It has always been a big aspect of what we do at Google, with our mission of organizing the world's information, making it universally accessible and useful. With these investments, we are trying to bring the best information in the world to the learning or education task at hand. Now, this has never been more important than it is today. Like information did in the 90s, learning is undergoing a massive transformation today. To make more learning possible, we want to use advances in technology to help meet your evolving needs. That's not an easy task, and it won't be solved quickly. But to take an analogy from search, some queries can become long-term quests. But the end result can be really amazing. What if everyone in the world was able to feel like they were on the frontier of knowledge based on their interests, their capabilities? What if it were possible to bring the best of technology to help everyone in the world learn anything in the world. Now, pushing that vision forward presents an amazing potential future, but that vision starts with educators everywhere. And we want to use technology so that together, we can achieve that vision with you. Throughout the course of our time together today, you'll hear about new product launches, learn how we are building products to serve all types of learners. And you also get a sneak preview of how we are applying AI and machine learning in an assistive way to improve learning outcomes for all types of students. We're excited to continue partnering with you on this journey to bring quality learning experiences to people around the world to help everyone reach their full potential. Thank you for joining us today. Our community in Vicksburg Warren School District, it is one unlike any other. We come every day, you know, dedicated to make a difference in the lives of children. When you're talking about curriculum and instruction in a school district, that is the backbone of a school district. So you have to be able to execute. By any means necessary, you have to be able to get your job done. And our district is 100% free and reduced lunch. That does not limit their potential or reduce our commitment to serving them. In Vicksburg Warren School District, every kid has a device, from pre-K all the way to 12th grade, and that is their device. That is their learning tool. 
You guys can go ahead and start on your daily paragraph. When they told me I could have my Chromebook for the first time, I was like, wow, just, just wow. I never had my own computer before. That was so new to me. Equity is the core of our teaching and learning process because we do everything that we can to make sure every child gets individualized instruction based upon their needs. When you have a small group that you're working with with a teacher and a child needs additional learning, more in remediation, some intervention, you can do that via technology in a small group. It makes life a lot easier. On our Google Chromebooks, we take assessments, we take virtual field trips, we create presentations, we do it to complete assignments. I am really happy to see so many people on the pie. Google for Education definitely saves me a ton of time. I create my assignment, set up a Google Meet, create my instructional video, and I post it on there. It's incredibly user-friendly. Okay, excellent. I want every child here to leave equipped to do whatever their mission is. That's my vision. Okay, this one right up here. Yes. Press that. When I accomplish something at school, it makes me feel powerful. Technology can level the playing field for children. It opens up so many avenues that they otherwise would not have been exposed to. It gives them a chance. It's hope. Hi, I'm Avni Shah and I lead the Google for Education team. A year ago, we got a call from the Italian Minister of Education who was looking to get every student in the country using G Suite for education in a matter of days. I don't think I'll ever forget that call. Soon after, things got a little closer to home when my daughter's school closed and moved to 100% distance learning over a weekend. As the world shifted beneath our feet, as homes became classrooms, and as teachers found new ways to connect with students, Everyone in the education community has stepped up in a big way. So I wanted to start by saying thank you. You, the education community, continue to inspire us with your creativity, resilience, and commitment to advancing learning for your students, both in and out of the physical classroom. Sundar and Ben mentioned our ongoing commitment to learning and education. In 2020, we further cemented this commitment. People from across Google joined forces to bring the best of our technology to supercharge schools and universities and the people who run them. On the Google for Education team, we had the unique privilege of seeing how education was being impacted daily around the world. And while technology alone wasn't the answer, we knew it could help. So our first responsibility was making sure that all of our services stayed up and running despite the increased usage and new demand so that teaching and learning could keep going. Next, we turned our attention to how we could give people the choice and flexibility they needed to be successful in this new reality. To support schools with hybrid learning, we listened to school leaders and released dozens of their most requested features across our products, from Smart Compose, AutoCorrect, and built-in citations, to 20 new features in Google Meet alone. To make it even easier for schools to integrate G Suite for education into their learning management system, we launched Google Assignments. And with countries around the world impacted by school closures, we quickly made Classroom available in 10 additional languages. To support teachers as they adjusted and adapted to virtual teaching and learning, we launched Teach From Anywhere in partnership with UNESCO and local partners and expanded our teacher center, making free product guides and training available across all of our tools in more than 150 countries. We also released guardian guides to support families with detailed tutorials on our tools because we heard it was feeling tough to get a grasp on all the tools your kids were using for school. And to help students, we added new accessibility features to G Suite and Chromebooks, like live captions in Google Meet and Google Slides, and made our speech-based literacy app Read-Along available in more languages to support literacy across 180 countries. While this past year has brought so much change, in some ways, a lot also stayed the same for us. Our aim has always been about being assistive, providing the technology and tools that are most helpful for you and your students based on your ever-evolving needs and challenges. This approach has become even more important during this unique time, but has always been and will continue to be what informs our work. 
As we think about being helpful, underscoring everything we do are our commitments to enable every leader, empower every educator, and equip every student while continuing to evolve every day. We want to enable every leader to bring innovation to their schools and universities at scale. The peace of mind that they're investing in secure products that are flexible to their unique needs. We work each day to empower every educator from pre-K teachers to university lecturers by giving them simple assistive tools so that they can focus on what they do best, which is helping their students reach their full potential. We strive to equip every student with the tools and skills they need to be successful by focusing on inclusivity and accessibility so we can meet students wherever they are. And finally, we work to evolve every day by continuing to listen and learn from you, the experts, and ensuring that as technology advances and improves, it's reflected in the tools we build for teaching and learning. These are interconnected and the best solutions really embody all of them. We have found that when we enable leaders to bring secure, flexible products to their schools and universities, educators are empowered to help students reach their full potential and students are equipped with the skills they need to advance. So how do we bring this to life? By applying the best of Google's technology to education in order to be as helpful and assistive as possible. And as technology advances and your needs evolve, so too do our offerings. In fact, even the definition of assistive or helpful has flexed over time and will continue to change. For example, a few years ago, assistive looked like saving you time by reducing administrative tasks with classroom or helping you work together in real time in docs. But today being assistive also means helping students to learn to read or understand complex math concepts, to turn in their best original work or even create new ways to stay connected and engaged in virtual classroom environments. Looking ahead, given the new role technology is playing in education, there's a new frontier of challenges to solve and innovation to be had. We have the opportunity to apply the latest in Google's assistive technologies powered by artificial intelligence and machine learning to make new things possible and to raise the bar on what it means to be assistive. This might be diagnosing where at-risk students are struggling in real time to providing virtual assistants that help you build lesson plans and grade student work to making smart recommendations and differentiated lessons tailored to the individual needs of specific students. And of course, doing all this in a way that respects the trust you've placed in us to protect your privacy and the privacy of your students. These are ambitious goals and there are many challenges yet to be solved and work to be done. But we're excited about what this future holds and excited to share with you today the latest progress that we've made along our journey. Shantanu will kick off our time together by sharing the next evolution of G Suite, which will offer more choice and control to customers than ever before. Next, you'll hear from Melanie about new features to streamline and simplify your experience with our products, including classroom forms and docs. Jen will then share all the latest updates on Google Meet. After that, Andy will talk about what's new with Chrome and Chromebook devices. Laura will then share more on how we're building accessibility into our EDU offering since we want our products to work for everyone. And finally, we'll close out the day with Laura H. who will share more on how we're working to bring the best of Google's assistive technology to education and how we can work together to redefine what's possible for educators, leaders, and students. As we continue to listen first and move fast, we want you to know that we're here for the long haul, committed to providing a reliable set of services that best serve your needs. This past year went from being a scramble to adopt and adapt, born out of unexpected and adverse circumstances, to being an opportunity to reimagine what education could be. Our team has been blown away by the ways that you leaders and educators have used our products to make a lasting difference in the lives of your students, their families, and even your countries, especially as you continue to undergo daily shifts and big unknowns. Throughout our time together today, we'll be sharing several stories from around the world of people putting our products to use in innovative ways, because it's not the technology itself that's remarkable. It's what you do with it that excites us. Thank you for your partnership as we continue to forge ahead in our mission to bring the best of Google technology to education to help improve learning outcomes for all. We're proud of the progress we've made together so far, and we look forward to sharing what's new today and where we're headed tomorrow. 
The school is 23 years old. We have a population of 1,900 pupils. So everything's been going great until COVID-19 happened. The schools were closed in March. I got worried as a teacher. We were so sad because it was just an abrupt decision. All the work that they have been working on would possibly have to stall. We were very worried. I have bills, I have a family, and we depend on this job. Fear of the unknown, fear of the future, how are we going to meet our obligations? How are we going to survive? We felt hopeless and desperate. We saw a situation where our learners will slip away. When we were exposed to that Google Classroom, it felt this is what we needed. Hello. We soon realized that we needed more control over our offering. So we signed up for G Suite for education. The teacher is there, the teacher is explaining the concepts, just like in school. This movement. Parents appreciated and they decided to chip in financially. We have been able to keep going. We have been able to sustain our staff members. We have been able to get pupils that are not originally from our school to join our classrooms. This helps even the community around us to continue learning despite the restrictions and schools shutting down. I can confidently say as a teacher, our students are ready for the final exams. Whatever transformation COVID has forced us to go through is welcomed because the transformation is here to stay. The space of education has changed. We cannot ignore the strides that we have made during this period. In Swahili, there is this expression that says, Bada diki. Paraja. We have been able to grasp the opportunity and grow digitally in a way that we never got to do before. And Google for Education has been the silver lining and it has helped us remain relevant in very uncertain times. Hi, I'm Shantanu, the product and design lead at Google for Education. Each day, my team and I try to figure out how to make our products and features more helpful to you. As education was turned on its head this past year, our team has been amazed by your creativity and resourcefulness. And we've been humbled by how many of you turned to G Suite for Education to keep learning going during these challenging times. As you've used our tools in new ways, we've heard your feedback loud and clear. You need our tools to be more flexible, to give you more options to meet your evolving and expanding needs. In response, we've accelerated our product development. And in the last year alone, we've added dozens of new features to our free edition and more than 25 features to our premium edition. Today, we're gonna to share even more updates that will give education institutions more control and flexibility to support learning. But first, let's take a quick look back. This might surprise you, but G Suite for Education has been around for over a decade, and some of you have been here with us for the whole ride. We now have more than 170 million students and educators worldwide using our tools. What started as a way to help schools and universities operate more efficiently has become about so much more. For example, Maine High School District 207, located near Chicago's O'Hare Airport, has more than 6,000 students, and they speak 60 different languages. They started with Google Apps more than a decade ago to kickstart collaboration among students and teachers with Gmail and Docs. Over the years, they've adopted more and more of our tools, including Google Classroom, to help teachers save time. Now that they've upgraded to G Suite Enterprise for Education, District 207 relies on our enhanced Google Meet features to make distance learning as engaging as possible. We've grown and evolved with many of you over the years, and today we are bringing you the next evolution of G Suite for Education, now called Google Workspace for Education. 
This new name aligns with the new Google Workspace product announced in October and reflects our commitment to bringing the best of Google to education. What it means for all of you is simple. More options, more flexibility, and more advanced capabilities. We've heard loud and clear that different schools and organizations have different needs. Some need more advanced security offerings, others need to add to their teaching tools, and some need all of the above. That's why we designed Google Workspace for Education to offer more choice and control with more options to meet organizations' needs. Today, we give schools two options, a free edition or an all-in-one upgrade. Starting in April, we will retain our free edition, which will be renamed Education Fundamentals, and we'll offer not one, but three upgrade options so you can select the exact capabilities you need. Education Plus will offer all the functionality currently available in our existing enterprise upgrade. And we are adding Education Standard with advanced security and analytics and a teaching and learning upgrade with enhanced tools for instructors. Now let's dive deeper into what each of these additions offers. Education Fundamentals is our free suite of tools and was formerly known as G Suite for Education. It has always been and will always be free, and we will continue to invest in it by adding new functionality. Education Fundamentals includes all of the great real-time collaboration tools that many schools have been using for years, such as Docs, Forms, Slides, Sheets, and many more. It also includes Google Meet, Chat, and Gmail to help schools communicate with one another or keep learning happening, even if it has to be remote. And Google Classroom helps teachers save time and streamline class instruction so they can focus on what they do best. Plus, you get peace of mind with built-in security and easy to use admin controls. If your school is using G Suite for Education today, you don't have to take any action to transition to education fundamentals. Your school's experience with our tools will remain the same you'll just start seeing the new Google Workspace name and logos starting today. Now let's turn to our three upgrade options for those who are looking for greater choice and control. First up, Education Standard. Education Standard has all the features in Education Fundamentals plus advanced security controls and analytics. It includes Security Center with dashboards, recommendations, and investigation tool to help you safeguard your school against digital threats. For example, at Hunley Community School District 158, which is about halfway between Chicago and Milwaukee, the students keep their Chromebooks with them at all times, even during summer break. That's around 10,000 devices total, a pretty tough management task. If a student clicks on malware or even just forwards an email, it can be a big issue. Using Security Center, the Hunley CTO can get notified and manage the issue through a dashboard, all within a few minutes. In fact, the district has now cut down its third-party security auditing suite. Beyond Security Center, Education Standard also enables you to better control your entire learning environment with enhanced group management, advanced mobile management, and simple data migration. And you can optimize your systems and gain more usage insights with advanced audit options and log export for Gmail, Drive, and Classroom. Based on your feedback, Education Standard will be priced on total student enrollment rather than the number of faculty or staff as the tools enable you to secure the data and privacy of all users in your domain. It will be available later this year at a cost of $3 per student per year. Our next premium option is called the Teaching and Learning Upgrade. This option puts our most powerful educational features into the hands of your instructors. We know how hard it is to deliver classes remotely and with this upgrade, you'll have access to our premium Meet features that we've built to help you make distance learning as engaging and effective as possible. Features like breakout rooms, so teachers can quickly split the class into small groups and encourage more participation. Or Q&A and polling, so teachers can increase interactivity and quickly check student understanding. The upgrade also includes attendance tracking, noise cancellation, and meeting recordings so you can be sure no one misses what happened. In addition to enhanced Meet capabilities, this upgrade also includes unlimited originality reports, so you can encourage academic integrity and detect plagiarism from the web or from your own school-owned repository of past student work. And coming in the second half of 2021, teachers will be able to use new add-ons in Classroom 
to seamlessly integrate their favorite third-party tools and content right into Google Classroom. Schools can buy as few or as many teaching and learning licenses as they need for whichever instructors or departments need these advanced capabilities. The teaching and learning upgrade will cost $4 per license per month and can be added onto either the fundamentals or the standard editions. The Education Plus Edition is our ultimate upgrade and gives you everything we have to turbocharge your learning environment. It includes all of the functionality that was previously available in G Suite Enterprise for Education. This means you get all the advanced security and analytics capabilities in Education Standard, as well as the premium teaching and learning capabilities from the teaching and learning upgrade for all of your instructors, plus a few extra features. For example, you'll be able to use your own institution-specific Google Cloud Search to easily find relevant information across all of your Google Apps, including Gmail, Docs, Drive, and Calendar. You'll also be able to reach more people in your school community with up to 100,000 participants for Google Meet live streams. And coming later this year, school administrators will be able to save instructors time by automatically syncing Google Classroom rosters with your student information system. Like Education Standard, Education Plus will be priced based on student enrollment. It will be available at a cost of $5 per student per year. If your school is already using G Suite Enterprise for Education today, you don't have to take any action. Your experience with our tools will remain the same, and your pricing contract won't change when we release Education Plus in April. With the changes we're announcing today for Google Workspace for Education and all the updates we'll make in the coming years, we're reaffirming our commitment to education. Education Fundamentals, with our popular productivity and collaboration tools, has always been and will always be free. And we're now giving you more choice, more options, and more advanced tools, exactly what you asked for. To learn more about pricing for Education Standard, the Teaching and Learning Upgrade, or Education Plus in your country, please reach out to your partner manager. And remember, no matter which edition you use, with Google Workspace for Education, you own your data and intellectual property. Student work, recorded Meet lessons, and other content created by your educational community through their Google Workspace account is owned and managed by you, not by Google. Our products can be used in compliance with all local, national, and international standards. A decade after we launched G Suite, we're at 170 million users. I'm not sure how many educators and students will be using Google 10 years from now, but whatever the number, we'll be right there beside you, working to innovate to best meet your needs. Thank you. de las que más esperaban millones de padres de familia y estudiantes, la suspensión de clases. Se iniciarán las clases de manera virtual. Fue realmente como devastador en, en su momento, pero al lunes nos levantamos y dijimos, hay que trabajar porque esto siempre será una oportunidad. El total de maestros en Medellín está alrededor de los 11.600 con el acompañamiento de Google se alcanzaron a terminar toda la, la formación. Como somos más de 200 docentes en esta institución, con un grupo de estudiantes de programación, generamos una mesa de ayuda para apadrinar a maestros, enseñarles cómo utilizar Classroom, cómo crear sus aulas virtuales, cómo utilizar el Meet, cómo programar las clases, los encuentros sincrónicos, etc. Y ya veníamos trabajando con muchas herramientas de la suite de Google. Entonces eso nos permitió, digamos, adaptarnos un poco más rápido Los estudiantes no aprenden de la forma que nosotros tradicionalmente lo aprendíamos. Ellos son autodidactas. De hecho, nosotros nuestro rol, tanto el rol del maestro como el del estudiante, cambia. El maestro se convierte más en un coach. Los profesores son guías para nosotros y los profesores nos brindan las herramientas. Nosotros somos los que debemos aprender y entender esos conceptos. Mi reto como docente en el momento era poder integrar lo que sabíamos, lo que íbamos a aprender con esa parte humana. Para mí innovar es hacer las cosas de manera diferente. Tener un correo de Gmail es tener una llave que me permite acceder a, a otras herramientas. Lo vimos con las hojas de cálculo, la videollamada, el trabajo, ya lo convertíamos en un texto o en un examen, se calificaba, en todo eso se puede hacer. La docente Diana ha sido una de las personas que nos ha ayudado tanto a salir adelante con cada proyecto, con todas las aplicaciones que no sabíamos. Ella nos ha explicado muy bien desde un principio. 
La tecnología nos humanizó. Somos maestros generadores de oportunidades y sueños. El COVID nos ha llevado a innovar, a hacer cosas eh, disruptivas, a hacer cosas diferentes en los colegios o con los maestros para los estudiantes. Un mundo de colores, un mundo que sea fácil, un mundo innovador, un mundo cercano. Es lo que yo también sueño que sea la educación. Hi, I'm Melanie, a program manager for Google Classroom. I've worked with students and teachers for the last decade and understand the value technology can bring to a learning environment. However, I'm also very aware of the challenges that may exist for teachers when figuring out how to effectively use the wide variety of tools available for their instruction. That's why our team spends a lot of time talking with educators from around the world to understand how we can continue to improve our tools to better meet their needs, no matter where they are and what learning environment they're teaching in. As Avni mentioned earlier, our commitments to empower every educator and enable every leader are central to how we build our Google Workspace for Education products. Over the last year, as the needs and priorities of schools and communities changed, Google Classroom has adapted as well. Classroom is now serving over 150 million students, educators, and school leaders globally, up from 40 million a year ago. That's just in one year. As the number of people who rely on our tools have grown, we've been focusing on how to build a product that truly works for everyone. And when we say everyone, we mean every teacher, every school leader, every administrator, every student and family. We believe that whether you're using Classroom from rural India or suburban Indiana, on a laptop or a mobile phone, in a classroom or from home, our tools should support your needs so you can focus on your instruction. We first built Classroom to simplify and improve teaching and learning. We wanted to help you build stronger connections with students through personalized, real-time feedback, reduce administrative tasks like photocopying worksheets, and just give you back more time to focus on the things that made you want to teach in the first place. We've always seen simplicity as Classroom's most important feature. It's easy to use for every teacher, no matter what their comfort level is with tech, yet incredibly powerful and packed with features to meet the needs of all of our users, including the most tech-savvy educators. As Classroom's features expand and become the hub of learning for many schools, more and more of our customers are treating Classroom as a learning management system. But we don't want to be just another LMS. Instead, we want to redefine the category entirely by putting our users first. And that's why we'll continue to listen to your feedback, address your top priorities, and evolve Classroom into an experience that helps every teacher, every student, and every school leader succeed. To that end, we're thrilled to announce some great new Classroom features some that are live today and others that will be coming later this year. Having tools that work well together is so important in education. Whether you're a school leader, teacher, or student, you're likely using a number of different educational tools on a daily basis. The classroom team is working hard to connect all of these together. And we already have a strong head start. Over the past five years, hundreds of educational tools have integrated with our platforms, providing easier access through Google Sign-In, the Classroom Share button, the Classroom API, and our other APIs, like those for Docs, Drives, Slides, and Forms. What this means for you is fewer passwords to remember and an overall better experience. This year, for schools that have chosen Classroom as their hub of learning, we're taking this approach to the next level. Here are three big projects we're working on. First, we want to improve how educational content and tools integrate with Classroom. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if everything you wanted to use for teaching was just integrated directly into the Classroom workflow and interface? With Classroom add-ons, teachers can choose an add-on from a marketplace, assign it to their students, and it'll all just work. Admins will also be able to automatically push add-ons to specific teachers. 
We're working hand in hand with our EdTech partners to develop and test this new workflow, including Adobe Spark, Kahoot, IXL Learning, and Nearpod, and plan to expand the number of partner integrations later this year. Here's an example of what this can look like. Let's say you're a seventh grade math teacher, like I used to be. When that seventh grade teacher is creating an assignment or post, all the add-ons they have will show up directly in Classroom, and they'll be able to easily choose the content they need from that add-on. When their students open their assignment, they'll be able to do so without needing to log into any other tools. When that seventh grade teacher is ready to review and grade their student work, grades for such assignments will automatically be reflected back in Classroom. Classroom add-ons will be available to customers with Education Plus or our Teaching and Learning Upgrade licenses. Next, let's talk about Classroom rosters. Classroom gives teachers several easy ways to create their rosters, like a class code or click to join invitation emails. But we've heard from admins that they want to help instructors save time by setting up their classroom rosters in advance. Well, I'm excited to share, later this year, admins using Education Plus will be able to create classes and populate and sync rosters directly to Classroom from any student information system, also known as SIS. We'll start with K-12 SISs in the US with plans to expand to more. To round out our efforts to make Classroom work better with other tools, we're continuing to expand the SIS offering for Classroom's grade export feature, which will allow that seventh grade teacher to easily sync grades from their Classroom gradebook to their SIS, eliminating the need for them to keep grades in two places. Great Export is available now to eligible Skyward and Infinite Campus customers and coming soon for Aspen users. Our team also spends a lot of time talking to administrators about their top needs and concerns. Here are two features that we're working on to help improve the admin experience. First, we know that admins often want to better understand how people on their domain are using Classroom. To make this easier, starting soon, admins can use Classroom audit logs in the admin console. With audit logs, admins can see who did what on their domain and quickly get to the root of Classroom-related issues, such as seeing who removed a student from a class, who archived a specific class on a certain date, and more. Secondly, coming soon, Admins using Education Standard or Education Plus will be able to get deeper insights about classroom adoption and engagement and determine who might need help. For example, let's say your school is currently 100% virtual and you're wondering which students are able to consistently access and complete their work in classroom. Admins will soon be able to export classrooms logs to BigQuery where they can do custom analyses. They'll be able to use our customizable Data Studio templates to visualize, monitor, and analyze usage across activities like assignments created, submitted, graded, and returned, with filters for date, instructor, and student. When COVID-19 drove the sudden shift to remote and hybrid learning, we made dozens of improvements to Classroom. This year, we're rolling out even more updates to make it easier to use Classroom in your hybrid learning environments. We know it can be tough to figure out which students are actively engaged during virtual classes. You'll be glad to hear that later this year, we're launching student engagement tracking inside Classroom. Educators will be able to see relevant stats to help them understand how students are interacting with Classroom each day, such as which students viewed a course, or submitted assignments. Lack of internet access is another central challenge to hybrid learning because home and mobile internet connections aren't always available or reliable for many students around the globe. So we'll be making the classroom mobile apps work offline or with intermittent connections. Students will be able to start their work offline, review their assignments, open drive attachments, and write assignments in Google Docs all without an internet connection. And they'll be able to submit their assignments once they're back online. With remote learning, we've also seen a huge increase in the number of images uploaded to Classroom, especially by students taking photos of paper homework. Later this year, we'll be making it much easier to attach and submit photos in Classroom. 
This includes combining photos into a single document, cropping or rotating photos, and improving lighting. Next, let's check out a few features we're adding to simplify educator workflows. Coming soon, teachers will be able to customize their classroom assignments and posts using rich text formatting. One of our most highly requested features from teachers. You'll be able to bold, italicize, underline, and add bullets to assignments. We're also updating how you use Classroom to grade on Android. We've seen more and more teachers around the world using mobile devices for giving feedback on the go. And these improvements will make it much easier for instructors to switch between student submissions, grade work while viewing an assignment, and share feedback. Plus, we've improved originality reports in classroom and assignments to help students turn in their best work while making it easy for instructors to check for potential plagiarism. Originality Reports is expanding to 15 languages, more than many other leading plagiarism detection services. Also, if you use CS First, our free introductory computer science curriculum, it's now better integrated with Google Classroom. Today, teachers are able to import student rosters from Google Classroom directly into a new CS First class, and students can sign into CS First using a Google account. We know many of you use our collaboration tools alongside Classroom, and based on your feedback, we'd also like to share some updates coming to Google Forms, Google Docs, and Jamboard. Google Forms is used by teachers around the world to administer quizzes, measure student success, and more. And one of the most requested features is the ability to save your progress when filling out a form. That's why we're happy to announce that when responding to a Google form, quiz, or quiz assignment in Classroom, your progress will be automatically saved as a draft for 30 days or until the form is completed. This means you won't have to start over if you can't complete a form or quiz in one sitting, if you want to switch between multiple devices, or if your internet connection cuts out before your answers have been submitted. We'll be testing this feature soon and expect to roll it out to everyone in the coming months. You can sign up to be included in this pilot today by visiting this link. And now in Docs. Last fall, we launched the ability to easily add citations to Google Docs. Coming soon, we'll be making it even easier. Instead of creating citations manually, you'll be able to enter a site URL and we'll find the right match. And to help more users around the world write with confidence, Smart Compose and Autocorrect is now available in French, Portuguese, German, and Spanish. And just as you're able to see revision history in Docs, teachers will soon be able to track edits and attribute changes to students in Jamboard as well. Now that we've discussed all of these great feature updates, we also want you to know how focused we are on your security. We know security and control is top of mind for many of you, especially with students spending more time online than ever before. And although we've made dozens of improvements across all of our products to improve security, we have four important updates we want to highlight and dive a little deeper into. First up, target audiences. This beta feature is great for large districts and university systems that want to set up easy file sharing boundaries for individual schools, departments, and colleges. For example, let's say you don't want anyone to share files outside of the biology department. You can set up a target audience that limits link sharing to that department. So with that simple configuration, you just reduce the potential for accidental oversharing. Now, only the folks in the biology department will know about that new species you discovered. We're also launching automated group membership to provide admins a way to set it and forget it by taking the manual work out of adding or removing people from groups. With this feature, admins will be able to automate group memberships based on user attributes such as addresses, locations, organizations, and relations. So let's say you want to have a group for all history teachers. With automated group membership, you can easily create and maintain this group based on role. Admins can also set expiration dates for group memberships, so users are automatically removed after a certain length of time or date if a user only needs time-limited access. Next, we're launching document approvals. This feature will allow you to streamline approvals directly within Drive, Gmail, Docs, 
and other Google Workspace editors with a built-in process so reviewers can approve, reject, or leave feedback. So let's say you have an important newsletter going out to the school community and your entire leadership team needs to sign off. With document approvals, you can request their approval on the doc and clearly see who has approved and who you need to follow up with. And finally, we're always working to empower admins with advanced, easy to use security tools that help them keep their organization safe. That's why we're integrating the logs from chat, meet, classroom, OAuth, groups, voice, and calendar right into the investigation tool in the security center. This additional visibility into user actions will help admins quickly identify and remediate any problematic behavior. Whew, that was a massive amount of updates. So thank you for staying tuned in. Here's a recap of all of the features I just shared. From the updates we're making to improve how educational content and tools integrate with Classroom, to the various updates we're making to improve security across all of our products. To learn more about all of these features and more, be sure to check out our Google Workspace for Education social channels and blogs. Like I said in the beginning, our team is working hard to listen to you to ensure we're improving our tools to better meet your needs, no matter where you are and what type of learning environment you're in. We feel honored to continue developing Google Workspace for Education to support the ever-evolving needs of educators and students everywhere. And along with building these tools, we believe it's essential to ensure every educator is supported in using these resources to achieve their classroom goals. So before I go, I want to remind you that our Teacher Center has free product guides and training courses for all the tools we've mentioned today. Next, we'll share some big updates coming to Google Meet. Thank you. This journey began a few years ago when we came together to develop a digital strategy to breathe new life into the way that staff work, that teachers teach, and ultimately the way that children learn. It was really important for us to think about how are we making sure we're providing the very best teaching to all of the children in our schools. We very much wanted to move forwards with cloud-based technology. But we had to have an infrastructure suitable for children, but it also had to be useful for staff as well. What we decided to do was provide every child with their own Chromebook and we adopted G Suite for Education and then before we knew it, the magic really started to happen. OK, 3LS, I would like you to log into Google Classroom. It's had a really transformational impact on the school. Children embrace Google technology like a duck to water. It was really easy once you got the hang of it. It was just really fun. They're a lot more focused, they find the lessons a lot more fun and the engagement just went through the roof. Staff were able to get going quickly. We were given time to just try things out for ourselves and I think that was a really important stage of the process. It's reduced my workload massively and I know more about my children. At no point had we ever thought that Chromebooks for one-to-one -one would be a solution to a global pandemic. But compared to other schools, our children and staff were used to working in the cloud and through the use of Google Classroom and Google Sites we were able to switch learning online and deliver lessons from day one of the lockdown. Remember, you're figuring out what the value of the nine is. We work quickly to ensure that every family had access to the internet. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another day of home learning. Being at home, you don't see anybody. I miss the support from teachers. You're distracted with your siblings and your dog, and it's just really, it's annoying. Children's wellbeing was really, really important to us. We communicated with all of our parents on a daily basis. We arranged Google Meets where we drop in with the children. If you think of something good that's happened, because of lockdown. I'm spending more time with my family. Great answer, Bassie. Thank you for that. Within that first week, Google Meets had happened. Children were laughing together on screen. It was totally surreal. But while the buildings were physically closed, the school was open. The whole concept of a digital classroom and a digital school is exciting. If we can provide them with those real basic digital skills now, we're really preparing them for their adult lives. I'm Jennifer Shen, Senior Product Manager for Google Meet. This year, video conferencing has become an essential tool for teaching, learning, and staying connected. We've been investing heavily in making Google Meet work even better for you. 
Our priority for Meet is to create engaging learning experiences that are safe by default. Let's start with how Meet is launching a number of controls over the course of the next month to help educators moderate during class. Teachers will have the option to end meeting for all, so they have complete control and can prevent students from staying on a call after the teacher has left, including in breakout rooms. To make it easier to teach without interruption, educators will be able to easily mute all participants at once and decide whether students can unmute themselves or not. For educators who are teaching using tablets or mobile phones, they will also soon be able to control who can join, use the chat or share their screen directly from their iOS or Android devices. Later this year, we're also making it easier for teachers to manage access to their virtual classrooms. By August, when calls are started in classroom, students won't be able to join before the teacher. Me will know who's on the classroom roster, so only students and teachers in the class will be able to join, unless the teacher allows others in. Every teacher and co-teacher in the class will be a host of the meeting by default. So if there are multiple teachers, they'll be able to share the load of managing who can join, controlling who can chat or share their screen, and more. Meetings that aren't started from classroom will also support multiple hosts, making it easier to partner with co-teachers, paraeducators, and other people helping facilitate the class. In addition to giving educators more control in meetings, we know that school admins also want greater visibility and control to manage meetings across their entire domain. So we're also rolling out new capabilities for admins, including greater control over who can join video calls. Admins will soon have settings for whether people outside of their school, such as an external speaker, can join school-hosted video calls. They will be able to configure whether users in their school can join calls hosted by people outside of the school as well. For example, to facilitate student-to-student -student connections across districts or professional development opportunities for educators. And both of these settings will be easily configurable by group or organizational unit. Meet Logs data is now available directly from the admin console. So admins can better understand how people are using Meet at their school and have greater visibility and control to ensure digital citizenship standards are being upheld. We're also making a few additional improvements for educators with Education Plus or Education Standard licenses. Admins can now see Meet Logs data in the investigation tool. And just as teachers can end meetings for all participants, later this year, admins will be able to end any meeting within their school. We know that in addition to being safe and secure, me also needs to be engaging and inclusive for students and educators. Over the past six months, we've launched features like breakout rooms, hand raising, digital whiteboards, live captions in additional languages, and customized backgrounds to help educators bring some of the magic of the in-classroom experience to the virtual classroom and keep students engaged. Students will soon be able to more easily engage and express themselves with emoji reactions and meat. They'll be able to pick skin tones for their emoji to best represent their identity and react in class in a lightweight, non-disruptive way. And of course, teachers and admins will have full control over when reactions can be used. And because unreliable internet connections can make remote teaching and learning more challenging, especially when streaming video, we've improved Meet to work better if your device has low bandwidth. We've also made significant improvements to the performance of Meet on Chromebooks. These include audio and video optimizations, better performance while multitasking, reliability improvements, and more. Altogether, these updates will substantially improve the meeting experience on Chromebooks, including those with limited system resources or remaining usable life. We're also making a few additional improvements for educators with Education Plus or our teaching and learning upgrade licenses. First, we know how important breakout rooms are, so we'll be rolling out updates to make them even better like the ability to set them up ahead of time in Google Calendar. This will make it easier for teachers to prep for differentiated learning, be thoughtful about group dynamics, and avoid losing valuable time configuring breakout rooms during class. And to help students who weren't able to attend class stay up to date, later this year, educators will be able to receive meeting transcripts. They can easily share transcripts with students, review what was discussed during class, or maintain a record for future reference. While many of these improvements were born out of a need to help students and educators continue learning and teaching during the pandemic, we're excited about how Meet will continue to support school communities in the longer term. 
whether by expanding professional development opportunities, enabling students to access specialized content and courses from beyond their school, live streaming events, or facilitating live translated parent-teacher conferences. We will continue to connect, build, and foster school communities well into the future. これまで日本の学校の現場ではあまりパソコンやそして機器というものを使ってきませんでした日本の子どもたちを勉強のためにまたは自分自身いろいろな調べ物をするためにそして今回オンラインの授業を受けるために使うというふうに方向転換をさせていただいたわけです。ギガグローバルイノベーションゲートウェイフォーオールすべての子どもたちのためのゲートウェイを準備するという構想です。これで一人一台のパソコンまたはタブレットをしっかりと確保した上で一人一人の子どもたちの学びを進めていきたいと考えています。クロームブックを導入してからはクラスルームスプレッドシートスライドフォームなどを活用して子ども中心の子どもがワクワクできる学びに変わっていると思います子どもたちは共同しながらお互いにとって最適な会を見つけていくということをもう身をもって学べる環境になったなと思っています Google for Education は共同的な学びコストセキュリティなどあらゆる面で高く評価されていますギガスクール構想が目指す教育環境に最も適しているとして日本の約半数の自治体や教育委員会が採用を決定いたしました今年いよいよ最新の教育環境が教育現場でも整備されて、えー、子どもたちが一人一台 Chromebook を使い始めることになります Google for Education を通じて主体的で対話的で深い学びというのが日本中に一気に広まっていきます学びたいことや興味に応じて個別最適化された学びを実現したいなと思います評価や学年を超えるようなそんな挑戦も試みたいなと思っていますHi, I'm Andy Russell, product manager for the education and family teams on Chrome OS, an IT specialist for a couple of rowdy elementary schoolers on Chromebooks at home. This time last year, Chromebooks were amazing classroom tools for researching and writing reports, building websites, and creating videos. A lot has changed since then. For many, many kids in distance learning around the world, Chromebooks are no longer a tool you take off the cart and use in school, they're how you actually go to school. This is a profound shift. And I'm guessing that when we've all returned to class in some new normal, the way that you and your students have used computers will be forever changed. Avni talked earlier about empowering every educator, equipping every student, enabling every leader, and evolving every day. Today, I'd like to share how we're doing that with Chromebooks and the changes that we believe aren't just short term COVID adjustments, but long term shifts in how computers are used in school and at home. Let's start with empowering educators. We've seen a tremendous evolution of Chromebooks over the past couple of years, from great devices for students to the best computer for most teachers. They're portable, but powerful, like a tablet, but with all the features and functionality of a desktop computer, enabling teachers to break free from their desks and roam the classroom to connect with students one on one. That's why our team is working hard to build software tools perfect for teachers right into the operating system. And we're starting with screencasting. For years, teachers have been recording lessons for students to watch for help on their homework and study for tests. But this past year, screencasting has gone from niche to common to downright critical, which is why we're building a screen recording tool right into Chrome OS so teachers and students can record lessons and reports in real time in the classroom and also at home. Our screen recording tool will launch with Chrome 89 in March, but that's just the start. Going forward, we're looking closely at how machine learning tools built directly into Chrome OS. And only Chrome OS can make instructional content more engaging and accessible with real time translation, searchable transcripts, and Telestrator tools to bring out the sportscaster in all of us. This is how we see the future of learning, powered by assistive technologies that amplify teachers' voices, make school materials more engaging for students, and help all of us, teachers, students, and parents alike, 
to get the best answer to any question, anytime, anywhere. We expect these advanced screencasting tools paired with Chromebooks for educators and a new casting tool for students and teachers to not only transform teaching in the classroom, but to create a huge library of instructional videos custom tailored to study in school and at home. Next, let's talk about how we're equipping every student. Well, to start, we're providing students with lots of options with about 40 new Chromebooks, many of which are convertibles with stylus, touchscreen, and dual cameras for students to take notes, edit videos, create podcasts, draw, publish digital books, and record screencasts every day in school and at home. Every new Chromebook is ready for video conferencing right out of the box with hardware specs to deliver exceptional Google Meet and Zoom experiences. And this year, we'll also have a few more devices with built-in LTE modems called Always Connected Devices to help support students without access to the internet at home, as well as schools and countries with strong mobile broadband networks. Now, hardware is only as good as the software that runs on it. So to equip every student, we need great apps, extensions, and web tools too. In the past, it's been hard to find software designed for the classroom that meets regulatory requirements and works seamlessly on your device. And buying and deploying seat licenses for those tools has been even harder. That's why we built the Chromebook App Hub, a single destination for teachers and admins to find the best tools designed for the classroom and optimized for Chromebooks. Every app, site, and extension has resources and lesson plans for classroom use and a data policy section for you to assess compliance. With all these great apps, it's important that we enable school leaders to purchase and manage apps at scale. On the App Hub, you'll learn about our app licensing program that enables schools to purchase seat licenses to select tools that can be one-click deployed and monitored using Google Admin Console. We launched the program last year for schools to purchase licenses through hardware partners and enable them for organizational units in the school directory. But this year, we're also making app licenses available for sale through reseller partners and enabling admins to deploy licenses, not just through OUs, but for Google Groups as well. You buy a pool of licenses through WeVideo and one-click deploy them to a Google group of students in the media class. Set it and forget it. App licensing is just one example of how Google Admin Console and Chrome Education Upgrade make it possible for schools to centrally manage massive fleets of Chromebooks remotely. You might have noticed that we've been investing heavily in Google Admin Console to make it faster and easier to use. There are now over 500 Chrome policies to manage both users and devices for your domain, and some new features like zero-touch enrollment that make it easier than ever to deploy and manage Chromebooks at scale for remote learning. Now, when I say scale, I'm talking about districts like the Chicago Public Schools and the 300,000 Chromebooks they put in students' hands thanks to cloud computing, or the 3 million new Chromebook users in Japan just this year alone thanks to a government-funded initiative called GIGA, the Global Innovation Gateway for All. Fun fact, in Japan, Chromebooks are the number one device for schools because they're rated highly for collaboration, security, account, and device management. They're also the number one device globally in K-12 education for the second quarter in a row. When you're buying that many Chromebooks for teachers and students, both shared and dedicated devices for in-school and distance learning, it can be overwhelming to figure out the best devices for different users. So we're making it easier to find the right device with tiered options by use case, like running touch-based early learning apps, bridging connectivity gaps at home, and video conferencing with Google Meet or Zoom. Learn more at this URL. Along with these new devices, you'll find accessories like mice, headsets, hard disks, and drawing tablets, all certified and available through our Works with Chromebook website. You can find out more here. This year, more than ever, enabling leaders is a big focus for us. And to Avni's point earlier, we're working hard to evolve with you and your needs. One of those needs, and believe me, we're hearing it from parents and school leaders alike, is to involve parents and guardians in the learning process and make it easy for them to monitor their children online and troubleshoot tech issues. With our Family Link app, we give parents and guardians many of the same tools to manage their kids' personal accounts that school admins have in Google Admin Console, so they can do things like approve apps and filter web content that their kids can access. But until recently, you had to choose between your school account or your Family Link account. There was no way to keep an eye on your kids online and give them access to schoolwork. We listened and we evolved. Last summer, we launched a new feature for Family Link users, enabling them to add a Google Workspace for Education account. This lets students log into apps and websites with a school account while parents set guidelines for device and app usage at home. Here's a quick video. With so many kids using Chromebooks at home, 
Parents and guardians are asking for ways to supervise them while they're doing schoolwork online. Some kids are using school accounts on school Chromebooks, and parents want to be able to turn off YouTube, approve apps, or block websites. Others have their kids logged into personal accounts managed with FamilyLink on personal Chromebooks and want their kids to be able to access sites like Google Classroom with their school account. In this video, we'll show you how your kids can sign into websites and apps with a Google School account while being supervised by a parent using FamilyLink. This allows parents to keep an eye on their kids online by approving apps, setting time limits, and blocking websites but also give students access to all the tools and information they need for school. If you're interested in this and other resources for families, be sure to check out the Tech Toolkit for Parents and Guardians. Educators, please send this to your students. And parents, check it out for a deep dive into using Google tools at home. As our homes and classrooms have merged over the past year, we've all had many roles to play, sometimes all at once. It's been challenging but it's also forced us to think more creatively and to turn obstacles into opportunities. I hope that today's announcements showed you how the Chrome OS education and family teams are doing our part to meet the moment. And as we work to enable leaders, empower educators, and equip students for the long run, we'll continue to keep our ear to the ground and evolve every day to meet your needs. We're excited to work with you on everything to come. I オンラインサーブルを利用して、私たちのプラットフォームを利用して、私たちのプラットフォームを利用して、私たちのプラットフォームを利用して、私たちのプラットフォームを利用して、私たちのプラットフォームを利用して、私たちのプラットフォームを利
such as our built-in text-to-speech tools, Select-to-Speak, and Chromevox. Select-to-Speak lets you select items on your screen and hear them read aloud through spoken feedback. As someone with low vision, I use this feature all the time. You can also see word-by-word -word highlighting as the text is spoken for better audio and visual connection, which can be really useful for students with learning and processing challenges. Now, we also offer screen shading behind the selected content, which can be particularly helpful for young learners and people with dyslexia, as it can promote better focus. And for Chromevox, our full-featured screen reader, which is often used by people who are more significantly visually impaired or blind, we've added a number of new functionalities, including improved tutorials, the ability to search the Chromevox menus, smooth voice switching, which automatically changes the screen reader's voice based on the language of the text being read, and smart sticky mode, which enables you to avoid pressing the search or launcher key for each shortcut for faster navigation. You can also change the color of your cursor to improve its visibility. You can now choose from seven new colors in addition to the default black. This is designed to better support people with low vision and complements other ways that Chromebook cursors can be customized, like adjusting their size for further visibility. And for students with motor or dexterity challenges who use the keyboard or an external device for navigation, we've just launched Switch Access on Chromebooks. Switch Access helps make the interface accessible through the use of a one or two button switch controller. There are also many accessibility features built directly into Google Workspace products. Earlier on, we spoke about live captions in Google Meet, which are great for those who are deaf or hard of hearing. They're now available in Spanish, French, German, and Portuguese, in addition to English. You can also customize the placement of the captions and the size of the text, just as you can with live captions in Google Slides. And in Google Docs, we've launched several improvements to Braille support, such as new keyboard shortcuts, faster typing echo and screen reader navigation, improved handling of punctuation and spaces, and more. And we couldn't do any of this alone. There are many popular accessibility apps and tools being used by students and schools that integrate seamlessly with Chromebooks and Google Workspace, including Don Johnston's new integration with Google WaveNet to give students with print disabilities the ability to listen to text read aloud for better comprehension. Captive Voice's speech-to-text solution allows students to fill in worksheets and quizzes through dictation. And Cricksoft solutions, like Cricksoft Clicker Communicator, enables nonverbal students to use an augmentative and alternative communication app on their Chromebooks. All of these can be found on the Chromebook App Hub, along with information about hundreds of apps' accessibility policies. The shift from physical to virtual classrooms can sometimes prove even more challenging for students with disabilities. As parents and guardians look for resources to help support their children at home, they can check out the Tech Toolkit, along with our Guide for Guardians of Children with Disabilities, for in-depth tutorials and explanations of the features built into Chromebooks and Google Workspace. To learn more, visit edu.google.com accessibility. The future of education is digital. The number of students going to college online is rapidly increasing. We needed to create a solution that would enable working adult students to get the support they need 24-7. So we created a virtual assistant, Irving, built on Google Cloud. Irving has had over 700,000 conversations, serving over 89,000 students, and handling those conversations by itself at a rate of 93%. We talk about digital transformation as a way to remove barriers for doing all sorts of work, including teaching and learning. As we've been challenged by moving all of our university business to remote, we quickly started integrating G Suite. You're creating an ecosystem where you consider integration, accessibility, personalization. Many different institutions are using technology to be innovative and to provide more quality degrees. At Penn State World Campus, our goal on the team was to provide more efficiency to the academic advisors so that they could focus more on student services. And we did that by using Google Cloud. With our user interface, we are actually able to respond to students within seconds. It's a little bit of a eureka moment when we get that point where we've created some piece of technology that is going to really impact our students. I really didn't think that this would be anywhere remotely possible to obtain a degree, but if you have that can-do attitude, you can do anything that you set your mind to.
Hi, I'm Laura Holmes, a product manager on Google for Education. If there's one message you take with you today, it's that here at Google, we build our products for everyone. As part of this effort, and as Avni mentioned earlier, we aim to be assistive, providing the technology and tools that are the most helpful for you and your students. Just as your needs change over time, so does the technology that serves them. Over the years, I've heard from many teachers about how magical it felt for their students to transition to Google products, because for the first time, these students could collaborate with one another, no matter where they were. But yesterday's magic quickly becomes today's expectation. Tomorrow, the bar becomes even higher. So what does this look like in practice? How do we continually raise the bar on what it means to be assistive at the speed of your needs and technology's ability to meet them? Let's first get some perspective on how rapidly technology has changed in a short period of time. Remember when you were tethered to your home or office to make phone calls, or when a student was sick and their schoolwork had to be sent home with a friend, when no access to a physical classroom meant that no instruction took place? Today, we have Chromebooks that let you learn from anywhere, mobile phones that let you access information even without internet connections, Google Classroom to share and complete assignments, and video conferencing that lets educators teach remotely and students learn from home. Most of these technologies being used regularly today weren't available 10 years ago. Not only have these technologies changed the way that we teach and learn, they've also made us ask, what's next? I want to take some time today to share how we're already using assistive technology to enable leaders, empower educators, and equip students, and what an assistive future could look like. First, let's refresh ourselves on what we mean by assistive. Assistive technology is any technology that makes it easier for you to accomplish a given task, whether you are an education leader looking at students' performance trends, an administrator fielding IT questions, or a child learning to read. At Google, we power our products with assistive technology, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, or AI and ML for short. These technologies quickly process massive amounts of data and get smarter over time. We use these technologies with care and will always do so in a way that respects the trust you've placed in us to protect your privacy. Now let's share some examples of how we're applying assistive technologies to save people time and resources and help them make more informed database decisions. First, we'll focus on how we're using assistive technology to enable education leaders. For many education leaders, responding to technical questions from students and families in their community can be incredibly time intensive for their IT admin staff. This was especially tough during the transition to remote and hybrid learning. Today, through Google Cloud, you can add an automated virtual assistant to your school or region's web page to answer frequently asked questions from your community. In Ontario, Canada, the Upper Grand District School Board turned to this technology last year when they quickly had to pivot to online learning. The high volume of incoming technical support questions overwhelmed the district's IT admin staff, and response times lagged. In less than three weeks, their team created an automated virtual assistant to respond to families' questions. The virtual assistant handles about 1,000 queries a day with 92% accuracy and less than one second response time. This enables parents and students to get the answers they need quickly while also reducing the burden on administrative staff. Today, we're introducing another new offering geared towards education leaders, Google Cloud's Student Success Services. It works like this. Using artificial intelligence and machine learning, Student Success Services extracts and draws meaningful insights from vast arrays of data. With these insights, we enable leaders to take decisive action to improve learning outcomes for educators and students. One powerful example of this comes from Ivy Tech, a community college system in Indiana serving over 50,000 students. Using Student Success Services, education leaders can predict with 80% accuracy whether a student is at risk of failing a class or dropping out. In the initial pilot, 3,000 students who were contacted went from at risk of dropping out to improving their grades to a C or better. As we work to equip more students around the world with the skills they need to succeed, assistive technologies such as machine learning are the backbone of everything that we do. These technologies allow us to deliver the most relevant information in the shortest amount of time and in the most engaging way possible. It starts with our earliest learners. Many of you may be familiar with Read Along, our Android app that encourages children to have fun while learning to read. It features a virtual reading buddy named Dia, 
who helps children by learning and responding to them in real time as they read aloud, using Google's advanced text-to-speech and voice recognition technologies. Many times, Dia helps students when they might not have someone else in their life to help them learn to read. We've found that after reading for just 100 minutes in the app, students have improved their oral reading fluency by up to 88%. As students grow and tackle more complex learning challenges, our assistive technology grows with them. Last year, more students and their families than ever turned to technology for learning assistance, from searching for explanations to watching math tutorials. That's why we're kicking off 2021 with an expansion of our homework help and learning features on Google Search. Today, if a student gets stuck on a math problem, they can type an equation into the search bar or take a picture through Lens in the Google app to find a step-by-step -step explanation of how to solve the problem. To reach more students around the world, we're also making these features available in up to 70 languages. Through our partnership with key math providers, we are also increasing the breadth of topics supported to include subjects like geometry and precalculus. Beyond helping students find the right answer, we want to ensure that they understand the process to get there, to fully master a given topic. For numerous math, physics, and chemistry concepts, students can find results on search that provide relevant explanations, videos, and formulas to assist their learning. We're thrilled to announce that we have partnered with education providers like BBC, Topper, Chegg, and Kahoot to surface sample practice problems directly in search. Students can try it out by searching for a phrase like linear equation practice problems. These tools give students an opportunity to test their knowledge and continue on to educational websites for more information. You will see these new features roll out over the next few weeks. By connecting students to the information from the best educational resources on the web, we hope to assist them in their learning and support the amazing work that educators do each and every day. I mentioned earlier that yesterday's magic becomes today's expectation, and that each day the bar gets higher. So let's raise that bar right now. I invite you to a not too distant future where assistive learning technologies help teachers do what they love and help students learn in a way that is best suited to their needs. Today, we ask our teachers to do a lot. Let's look at one task, creating student assignments. Often, assignments are aggregated from across many different sources, including school curriculum content, physical textbooks, and websites found through Google Search. Finding the right sources and putting them together in a useful and compelling way can be time consuming. Now imagine, what if Google could help make this easier for you? Specifically, what if we could analyze your existing materials, the web and YouTube content, and quickly evaluate their quality and relevance to your teaching goals? In an assistive future, this becomes possible. Now we'll turn to the students. Once they have received an assignment, they may find that they are stuck. In many cases, students do not have immediate access to a teacher, tutor, or guardian to help them. What if we could use the power of Google's artificial intelligence to provide real-time feedback and encouragement on practice problems? What if we took this a step further by offering step-by-step -step explanations and helpful formulas along the way? How might this improve student performance over time and build confidence in their abilities? Teachers are constantly looking for ways to improve student understanding, but unless they are working alongside that student at every moment, determining the areas of greatest need can be challenging. In an assistive future, teachers would have access to class-wide summaries to understand how many students needed help on a given topic or which question was most difficult for students on an exam. Teachers could even drill down to the individual level to get a view into subject comprehension or to see if a student made multiple attempts on trying to solve a problem. In an assistive future, everyone benefits. As a teacher, you have more time to focus on what attracted you to teaching in the first place, to dive deeper into high interest topics and conversations, to think creatively about which lesson plans will resonate with your students, and to support your students both emotionally and academically. Your students are more engaged because they receive one-on-one -on -one support both in and out of the classroom. They receive personalized learning materials and feedback, which improve their subject comprehension and give them greater confidence in their learning abilities. In turn, they are more invested in taking ownership of their education. Education leaders benefit too. They get a snapshot of classroom practices, a view into student learning, and real-time insights to inform how they can best support their instructors. 
With Google Workspace for Education, they can also rest assured that they're managing student data safely with Google's best-in-class data security and privacy practices. This future is not here, yet, but we've created many of the building blocks to get us there. Already, teachers and students use assistive technologies like Google Search and YouTube to find relevant learning content. And with AI and ML, we're adding more intelligent features to these tools all the time. When it comes to building a better future, we can't go at it alone. That's why we've invested over $3 million so far in Google.org grants for organizations using AI in education. Organizations like Talking Points and Quill.org are using AI to improve experiences for educators, students, and their families, from breaking down language barriers to assist parent-teacher communication, to providing high-need students with feedback on grammar and syntax to help strengthen their schoolwork. We're so excited to work with all of you to continue rethinking and raising the bar on what it means to be assistive, to best serve the needs of leaders, educators, and students. We know that right now was a very unique time in education, that many leaders and educators are still in crisis mode. We also know that the needs of today will be different than the needs of tomorrow. We hear you and we're here for you. As we look to the future, we will continue to push the boundaries of what's next and bring the best of Google technology to education, technology that continues to evolve each day. We thank you for spending your time with us today, for dreaming big in partnership with us, and for showing us what's possible when we all work together. Thank you. My name is Azmat Iqbal, and I teach in government-edited Urdu High School in English. हमारे बच्चे ऐसे परिवारों से आते हैं जिन्हें डेली जद्दोजहद करनी पड़ती है कई माँ बाप दूर गाँव से बच्चों को स्कूल भेजते हैं उन्हें तालीम की अहमियत पता है मेरे अम्मी सातवीं तक पढ़े हुए हैं और मुझे और मेरे बहनों को बोलते हैं कि खूब पढ़ो और खूब मेहनत करो ताकि तुम अपने पैरों पर खड़े रह सको मुझे आगे जाके मेडिकल कॉलेज ज्वाइन करनी है लेकिन मार्क्स के बिना मुझे मौका नहीं मिलेगा मैं भी इन हालातों से गुजर चुका हूँ जिनमें स्कूल आना और पढ़ाई जारी रखना कितना मुश्किल है इसीलिए मेरी कोशिश होती है कि हमारे बच्चों को मैारी तालीम मिल सके कोविड के माहौल में हमें डर था कि बच्चे कहीं पीछे ना रह जाएं। हमारे स्कूल में डिस्टेंस लर्निंग के लिए सहूलतें कम थी तो हम टीचरों को ही कोई नया रास्ता ढूंढना था महाराष्ट्र सरकार की तरफ से जब गूगल फॉर एजुकेशन की ट्रेनिंग दी गई तब मुझे गूगल टूल्स को समझने का मौका मिला इन डिजिटल टूल्स के साथ हमें ज्यादा इक्विपमेंट की जरूरत नहीं थी सिर्फ एक डिवाइस और बेसिक इंटरनेट चाहिए था घर पर पढ़ाई जारी रखने के लिए दूसरे टीचर से भी जल्द ही सीख गए और फिर हमने ऑनलाइन क्लासेस शुरू कर दी शुरू में दिक्कत ये थी कि ज्यादातर बच्चों के पास मोबाइल अवेलेबल नहीं था एक ही घर में तीन चार बच्चे एक ही मोबाइल शेयर किया करते थे तो फिर हमने लेसन की वीडियोज बनाकर उनकी लिंक के शेयर करनी शुरू की ताकि बच्चे उन्हें कभी भी देख सके मुझे इंग्लिश बहुत मुश्किल जाता है पर जब मैं सर के वीडियो को रिप्ले करके देखती हूँ तो मुझे बहुत इजी हो जाता है आई एम फॉलोइंग इन यूर फूड स्टेप एंड आई डोंट वॉन्ट घर पर पढ़ाई की सहूलत से खासकर गर्ल्स से में बहुत चेंज आए अब वो पहले ऐसी शर्माती नहीं है बल्कि खुलकर बात करती है हर क्लास में हम टेस्ट की एक लिंक भेजते हैं जिससे बच्चों को टॉपिक को समझने में आसानी होती है और हमें भी उन्हें जाँच करने का मौका मिलता है अब तमाम इवेलुएशन और ऑफिस का काम ऑनलाइन हो चुका है पेपर वर्क कम हो गया है इसलिए टीचरों के पास ज्यादा वक्त भी है क्लास प्रिपरेशन के लिए और ज्यादा इंटरेस्ट भी है यहाँ तक के पेरेंट्स को भी ऑनलाइन जुड़ना आसान लगने लगा है मैंने कभी किसी किताब में पढ़ा था कि द सीक्रेट ऑफ चेंज इज टू फोकस ऑल यूर एनर्जी नॉट ऑन फाइटिंग द ओल्ड बट बिल्डिंग द न्यू हम हमेशा अपने हालात का मुकाबला नहीं कर सकते हाँ लेकिन नए जराए का इस्तेमाल करते हुए उन्हें बदल जरूर सकते हैं